Jose, uh, I deeply appreciate uh, that very long citation. <laughs> 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 uh, the chair of location and platform guests, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. Uh, it's a huge delight for me to be part of uh, today's event to celebrate with you the 80th anniversary of the establishment of one of Nigeria's very great schools, government secondary school for women. When the able chairman of uh, the Old Boys Association, the Buddha Branch of the Old Boys Association, Dr. Joseph Norong, Past work through Dr. Bodia Baoji, the Deputy Executive Secretary of the National Injustice Commission. I didn't hesitate to accept the invitation. Uh, Dr. Bodia Baoji cannot give me a directive, and I will refuse it. Uh, so, without hesitation, I said, Yes, uh, I must be here today. I did not want to miss the opportunity of celebrating this very good school. I did not want to miss the opportunity of a school that produced a distinguished old boy, Professor Tim Obaji, my boss and one of Nigeria's most courageous ministers. Today we are talking about the school feeding program and we're going to produce school feeding program. Professor Tim Obaji he produced school feeding program and progressed with it successfully. We're talking about improving the infrastructure of the Nigerian universities. So, Chief Obaji led the crusade to improve infrastructure in our universities. We're talking today about, about as far as infrastructure, improving postal facilities in our universities. She carried the banner of that crusade of getting good hostels in our universities. And when the battle was hot, about post UME then, post uh, university's matriculation examination. That was the battle was very hard. Professor Chiwa Obaji stood as a brilliant old boy of your school. She has done exceedingly, exceedingly well. I did not want to miss the opportunity of celebrating a school that produced uh, my classmate at the University of Ibadan, Sir Jonas Otocha, a warrior geologist. As far as the school has produced very, very of you, Dr. Dozi and all of you, I found something very intriguing. When I got here in the morning and uh, I interacted with the uh, old boys, I found that they had this, you know, bright faces, they had good manners, they were courteous. They were very well brought up. So that's a school. I have a regret. I have a regret. The regret is when I was looking up to get into a secondary school a few years ago, 1962 precisely. <laughs> I went into another school. But I missed the opportunity of attending this school. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Grandchildren, great grandchildren, I will ensure that <laughs> I'm here today, ladies and gentlemen, to share my thoughts with you on the state of education in Nigeria and propose some recommendations for remedying the deficiencies that have persisted for too, too long. If I were to take an alternative title to the address, I would say education in Nigeria. Nothing to smile about, but now time for a grip. In one short address as this, we cannot see it all. I will only underline a few key areas and explain the participants at this colloquium to add their perspectives. Together, we will then come up with a collective position that we can regard as a template for restoring education to its most glory. I should hasten to add that ours will turn out to be one of several recommendations that have been made over the last 20 years on the subject 
of improving education in Nigeria. The lack of political will has not enabled these recommendations to be implemented. The good news for us all is that this is a season of change, and we are hopeful that the outcome of the colloquium, which will involve thinking outside the box, will have the ears of those who will faithfully implement the recommendations. I need to join others who have commended the good voice for setting up this colloquium. It will be your contributions to the Guari administration. A new minister is going to be in place uh, next week. And as a minister, this is our template for remedying deficiencies in the education sector. And I will encourage the old boys to go beyond presenting this to the past and be. Periodically make noise about the recommendations. Keep hammering it out. We can keep hammering it to their ears. We ask that you do this, we ask that you do that. And also get a checklist of your recommend of the recommendations that will come up come out from this group. Get a checklist. When the minister has done one of them, tick it and send the recommendation to the minister you have done this respect and should do the next. Now from less than in 1960, we had less than 3,000 primary schools, eroding about 1.3 million pupils. Today, October 30th, October 29th, 2015, there are now over 94,000 public and private primary schools with enrollment in excess of 32 million. Secondary school number and enrollment went from 1,227 and 24,640 respectively in 1960 to over 15,000 public and private secondary schools today with 12.4 million students. At the university level, excuse me, at the tertiary level, there has been similar growth from one university college. In 1960, there are now 141 universities, 141 universities with aggregate student enrollment of over 1.8 million, full time and part time. Now, since Nigeria's population growth outpaced the education sectoral growth rate, such quantitative expansions failed to significantly reduce literacy rates. The education sector report saw a leap in many of the quantitative indicators between 1960 and 2015. Now let's continue with these gross morphological comparisons of the sector between 1960 and 2015. We now add less of quality, not quantity. Start differences now pop up. The graph takes a double, a double plunge. In 1960, the standard six product, standard six product, had good skills for the workplace. In 2015, that's a good in 2015, the typical university graduate can hardly be touched with a 10 meter pole by serious minded employers. Adult literacy in 2015 is still a shameful 67%, 55 years after independence. And we are unable to attain most of the carbon education forum and millennium development goals related to education, in spite of the huge resources of the country to make sure we do not run shoulders with countries on the global list of poor performance in education. Nigeria is too endowed to have about 12% of basic education kids <coughs> sitting on the floor on that trees to learn in 2015. Nigeria is too endowed to have less than 20% of the public primary schools in the country not sufficiently resourced to deliver quality basic education. Yet, Officials of local and state governments to which this level of education is assigned are feeding fat from jumbo salaries, big cars, personal mansions, and are known to and are known for ostentatious living. In some states, notably Guadalupe, though, competency tests for teachers showed dismal performance in con if conducted nationwide, the results will be alarming. Yet, for political gains, state governance has scared to take corrective action, jeopardizing the future of the country. 
Between 1960 and 1975, the education system attracted respectable funding and the quality of delivery was comparable to what obtained in institutions all over the world. The system benefited from a high dose of highly qualified local and expatriate staff. The contributions of Nigerian scholars to research literature, patents and inventions were about the most outstanding in Africa. Indeed, between 1965 and 1970, Nigeria contributed the highest in Africa to the international literature in science, engineering, medicine, social sciences, and the arts. Teaching quality was equally exemplary. So also was community and extension services. However, by the late 1970s, some crack set the development system. The oil boom of the early of the early 70s had started to clear, and a huge injection of funds in the system started to win. This figure is slight depression in the quality of delivery. Through, though not dramatic enough to upstage the eminence of Nigeria in the African higher education space. As stated earlier, by the mid 1980s, quality started to depress at a very alarming rate. Now, two major factors triggered this phenomenon. SAR completed its own, and uh, we had all manner of decay uh, setting as a consequence of our obedience to the Bretton Woods institutions and, uh, and the World Bank. Now moving further on the road from 1960 to present, we encounter significant landmarks uh, in what we call dissidents of democracy. Establishment of state and private universities and the federal universities of technology coincided nightly with periods of democratic governance. Funding of the universities observed the post. The military is ascribed credit, like its credit for the establishment of credit in this case, for the establishment of most of the second generation federal universities and perhaps little else beside. The disdain of the academia has been suggested as a reason for the lackluster support of the military for university development. Now, fast starting now to 2000, because I was asked by the organizers, so let's look back, let's look at the present, and then look at the future, and do a gap analysis, coming closely to that. Uh, fast starting to 2000, the universities were short of everything for students. There was actually shortage of staff to cope with a much expanded system. Funding inadequacies persisted. Quality of instructional delivery was poor. Frequent strikes leading to closures exerted toll on quality of graduates. Incidents of exam and practice causing and sorting did not abate. Many graduates, especially from degree notes and sandwich programs, demonstrated competence and because of their large number, gave the Nigerian graduate a poor public image of being half baked. Now from 2000 to date, the system eased slowly, very slowly into a recovery mode. Success stories have chalked up for it in a number of fronts. Within the last eight years, Chairman ladies and gentlemen, funding especially to federal universities has taken a huge leap. When I was the FCF National Universities Commission, what I used to give what used to pass through us to the federal universities is just a small fraction of what the universities are having now. If for capital development, uh, Dr. Badal Bayou will agree because they have seen it all. They have been in this for 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whereas, let's take a typical university, let's take the University of Technology World, where you're supposed to be. We'll give Futo maybe a bit of answer, maybe something like about. Uh, a uh, few hundred, a few hundred naira, maybe like 20, 30 million naira for capital development. Today, Futo PC does not get, any, get things, get money, billions. And that's typical of all the, of all the universities. But i tell you something. It is not the uh, uh, well, uh, 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 
school catch a boy is going to be governor somewhere. From Ibo State. Then we go from Ibo State. President of Nigeria, I assure you. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about funding. Funding is diminishing. I, 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 I like to. Yeah. <laughs> if you throw in all the money that Nigeria has to education, don't ever think that it's going to translate 100% to improvement in quality. When I hear people more fun to educate more, they just laugh. Now we have more funds into the system. Do we have a commensurate growth? It is not. Now let me tell you uh, how I think uh, education quality has been bolstered. And it is not conjectural. It is, uh, it is, uh, it is based, it's empirical, based on statistical modeling. Uh, I belong to a group uh, that is not as headquarters in Harvard where we try to simulate quality in education systems. And what we do is we already have a model which has one about 120 variables in the equation. Now let's take this to be quality that we are trying to relate. We talk about education system. So a system will have some input into it, we'll have the process, and then we'll have the output. Let's assume that. This is the input, this column is the input. Input into every education system uh, includes the students, the teachers, the facilities. Funds is just part of the input uh, the, and all other things like that. Then the process is what happens in the classrooms, what happens in the teaching and learning, the management of the school, and then you have the output. So, uh, if, you, if you took a student, even within that uh, input variable, you have several other variables within him or her. Motivation to learn, reading culture, socioeconomic status. These are variables of the student that affect quality. Funding, quantity, and uh, utilization, and then uh, facilities. Facilities will include laboratories, workshops, textbooks, all of this, all of this. So what we do within that, within, within that reset group is to get ministers of education from different countries of the world to bring in data on all of these variables. And when uh, we run, we run the, 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 uh, the scheme, it's an annual workshop. I go with it every two or three years to join the group. But every year, ministers of education will come with their data and they will sit with us and we'll walk them through this model. And we're not able to tell them, now listen to them, we're able to tell them that the contribution of students, the quality of the students, the quality of the teachers, their training, their motivation, their welfare, their experience, each and those are different variables, the contribution to quality improvement. The model gives you by way of quantification, that teacher motivation will contribute maybe 2% to welfare, I mean to quality. Reading uh, culture of students will contribute this. The textbooks will contribute this. So if the minister now has 100 million naira in the budget for education, the minister can then apportion the money based on those contributions. So what do we have in Nigeria? A minister comes up, and says, oh yes, because they want to talk money. They will just say, test books, yes, test books. You buy test books for, for them. Holding all their variables constant. Holding teacher motivation constant. Holding teacher capacity building constant. All their variables are standing still. That is not how to. So, uh, we sold this idea to the, uh, to the government of Nigeria, we had this uh, education sector analysis, ESA. So we started gathering that data. And at some point, they just said, no, no, forget it. Because they just want to chop. But the way to go is for you to get how each of the different variables contribute to the impact of quality. And in the midst of that, a portion you know, the money that you have. So uh, I'm going to gather very quickly through this. And then, uh, 
uh, say, why is the EPR system not occurring well? In the face of several unemployed youth and the depressive on the job performance of a good number of those who find employment, it's helpful to examine those factors within the engineering system that are blameworthy. No doubt, several factors outside the school system are contributing, usually indirectly to the phenomenon, which are later turned to based on school factors. Within the school system, factors relating to policy, to the curriculum, to teachers, to students, to facilities, to curriculum delivery, to school administration, and all of that are implicated, just like I said. And then let, let me uh, uh, tell you about this one thing again, based on current practice. When we were having, uh, uh, if you like, little money, there was prudence, because you cannot now, you know, do a man of free law states with the money. Now, the money is now plentiful in the system. And what happens is that, uh, I know that during my time, the vice president, because of little money that we have, will, will, uh, will buy forces, will buy and use the money for. But, but now, plenty of money, they buy plenty of jeeps, and they go all over the world with all manner of things. So, it, it is not, I'm underscoring that fact, that it's not the volume of money that you have, that if it is judicious, utilization is transparency. And that's why I'm very much uh, applauding this TSA thing, Treasury Single as Bank. All the money goes to that court, and everybody goes to see it. And then, uh, based on what approvals you have, you can then access the money. By the way, the money is not lost in the court. The, your label of a university, of a school, or whatever, is still there. Your money is labeled inside that court. But you have to access it and use it uh, uh, correctly. And we talk about policy here. Well, excellent policy for education. Excellent. All the angles are covered. And as we know, the challenge is in implementing the policy. And uh, uh, I'm sure that this colloquium, as a point, will look at how the gap between policy and practice can be produced. The other is the curriculum. And I'm happy to let you know that the curriculum of our schools, uh, if you like curricula, in plural, uh, we have very good, let me use the, 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 the similar, we, we have very good curriculum uh, in terms of content, in terms of load of material content. That is why when our students leave your school, other schools, they go overseas, you find that they do well. Mm -hmm. But you see, the, 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 the difference is that we do not give our students, we just load them with facts, content, no skills. No skills. You know, so that, that is the that, that, that is the thing that I'm going to have right there. That was made through this. Now the other is the teacher challenge. Now, teacher preparation rests on when you were there. It is such a delight saying our our dad is uh, the they graduate they, they left uh, uh, the, the school, 1921, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying 1915, 1915, 1915. <laughs> okay, that's the left Okay, when did you leave the place, sir? 1960. 1960, you can see. Okay. Those teachers, I went to school, when I entered my school, when I entered in 1962, my teachers were exemplary. Yeah, they knew their content. Very well. So, I was talking about three knowledge bases. There is the content knowledge. That's knowledge of your physics, of your maths, of your geography, of your history, of your ego, and all of that. The second is pedagogic knowledge. Knowledge of how to teach. Yes, knowledge of how to use the child yeah. how to write lesson plans, how to pedagogic. manage your class. The third is a mixture of the two, pedagogic content knowledge. That is knowledge of how to teach that subject that you that you are giving. Let me tell you the the typical teacher preparation program in Nigeria today. You have just a little bit, maybe like uh, uh, a thought, at the best half in content knowledge. What you, what you expect, what, the best uh, the best uh, model 
is to have almost like 80% of hunting knowledge. So you are very well steeped in your subject, in your history. Okay. And then the others will be pedagogic knowledge and pedagogic hunting knowledge. But the whole thing is turned upside down. If you go to a faculty of education today, you find that the teacher training will, end, will, 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 will enroll for, I mean, sorry, will register for just some courses, a biology teacher, for instance, will, will, will register for courses in biology, uh, botany, zoo, whatever, and then go and learn himself or herself with education courses. You do history, philosophy, psychology, uh, all of that, all of that. At the end of the day, you end up not being well so, not deep enough in your content knowledge. And what they do is, you see, there are some areas that students find difficult to learn because teachers find, teachers, teachers don't teach those areas well. And this is because they run away from these courses during their teacher preparation games. Uh, uh, so, they go to the family of science, all those courses that are tough, they just don't take them. And those are the courses, those are the topics that you will find in the SSC curriculum that they will, that, that will make them better teachers. So, we are turning out, okay, the, the teacher that pops up with a 2 1, seven class proper in biology education or physics education or English education. Look at the classroom. You find a very long list of education courses. Five points. You get very high grades in education. I just get one point, one point, very poor grades in the in the, the, the genius of it. So when I visit schools and I see teachers of maths, I, I weep. They don't know as much maths as the students they are teaching. I'm sure this man here, this man here, yeah. teach here yeah, the students. Not in your school, but they are very good. Well. <laughs> so I don't know if you should be teaching, so it's of several, it's of, it's of several schools, as a senior English or whatever teacher that you want. So that's what challenge. Our teachers are not well prepared, and uh, it's getting worse by the day. Worse by the day, by all manner of sandwich courses. Sandwich. The sandwich courses are hopeless. I have a group, and close all of them down today. And we have to reform our them. We have to get, get the thing right. Let me tell you a typical sandwich course. You find that all this old mama or old papa they just go to the business, milling around. And what they do, they, they just almost like sell certificates to them. So the teacher factor from all our studies is critical in the equation for quality delivery of education. So the moment you get it wrong, then no matter how long more the story will tell, no matter how much money we pour into it, we can never make you know, uh, good progress. So that's the story I told about the teacher's talent. Now the challenge is related to students. They are now not as beautiful, as diligent, as we used to be in the past. They are now very lazy, not willing to learn. They just want some cut. Only yesterday I had a meeting in the KBM with uh, the officials of the science teachers. Association of Nigeria staff. So, we try to review our textbooks. The textbooks of study those in biology, chemistry, physics, text, you know, where we reach and all of that. So, we are told that these days students don't want to read too much grammar. Just put a uh, question and answer, just put that one there. So, they don't have that motivation to learn. They are more inclined to. Uh, uh, other things, social media, and, and all of that. Uh, we just completed a study in Lagos State on new learning delivery. Uh, we found that when we're doing the survey of uh, e-learning readiness, we found primary school kids, their phones, they, they, were, they were busy watching pornography there. It's all over. So the students who have challenges, who have challenges with uh, with students who have challenges with facilities. It's, uh, it's, if, you, if you went to a primary school in Botswana, for instance, or South Africa, you find that in terms of facilities, we are just like, we are just, I mean, it's just a shame, a crying shame. You go to uh, a, a primary school, sorry, there was a, just a person village, 
Anywhere it is. Go to the primary school it's been. You'll find that it is just it is just us. It's, it's, it's a shame. The facilities are not good to they are not data friendly. I'm sure that you don't even have a uh, connection wire inside the primary, primary school. Nothing. So no light, no nothing. So our facilities are a big challenge. And that challenge with curriculum delivery. Curriculum delivery is you have a curriculum, how does the teacher deliver the curriculum? How does the teaching class? The teacher comes to class because the teacher himself or herself has very low content knowledge. They just come there and make some little noise, write some notes on the board, the displays. What the teacher wants is for when uh, the West Africa Exams Council or NEPO will come out with uh, its instruction uh, 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 for price cards. So we now call the students and the Preparing towards the exam. Okay. It's a running them through practicals up the almost throughout the, 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 the duration of them. Do you do practicals every every time you are school? Yes. Yeah, even if we don't, we say yes, we go so I'm sure uh the Secondary School will be it's one great school. So the old boys support it so well. Uh, I'm sure you do practicals every minute. <laughs> So, but the most, most schools, biology students, you know when you see, when they get to hold a uh, bone or to draw, it's just a week to when an exam will start. And that's when you begin to draw this thing. And, uh, so, what kind of people are always getting? But not delivery as a challenge. So, how do we now inform the education system to meet these challenges? And how a few recommendations? Uh, let's take the curriculum, for instance. Uh, we need to share the fact. From the curriculum. The curriculum at all levels of the education system is laden with too many topics that can be labeled as junk in the light of modern development in the discipline and prepare for the world of work and effective service delivery. Teachers often describe uh, the curriculum as overloaded. When we compare with curricula in more five sided countries, if we took the curriculum, the biology, U.S. and Nigeria, what you find is this. By the that of Nigeria, you find one million topics, uh, diverse of all uh, uh, ecology, genetics, anything, anything. Little room for projects, for field work, for exploration, for carrying out what you call the processes of science, observing, experimenting, manipulating variables, nothing. But look at the world for the, the American curriculum. It will have to be just about uh, the tenth of what we have. But opportunities are given for the students to explore, to experiment. They do projects and so they develop the skill for the scientists. So this and gentlemen, now an exam is now given to these Nigerian students. Of course we clear with the ascrap people in the US. And they now when given an opportunity to to uh, basically we just fly and fly and fly very high. So we need to uh, shake off all these uh, uh, facts in our curriculum and then ensure that we uh, let them emphasize uh, projects, let them emphasize experimentation and uh, the first century skills. Uh, the, we should be able to improve the measurements of the curriculum. There are several personal and group skills that are needed for survival in the world of the 21st century. This includes peace building, religious tolerance, learning to collaborate with others and connect through technology, multimodal learning, uh, creativity, critical thinking, problem solving, decision making. All of these are 21st century skills that we will, that we will continue to make available to our uh, students. You know, uh, in another 20 years, the jobs that will be available in the world and not the jobs that will prepare our students. New things, new prices. In fact, uh, about three weeks ago, uh, we have a group uh, which we call the Observatory for the Future of Education. And we have project what are the jobs that are available in the future. Future will just be like 10 years, 20 years from now. And then we have a curriculum completely smart. So we need to look at uh, our curriculum all over to ensure that we have uh, them updated to the fact site. Now, 
teacher education, my solution here is very simple. Two things. Number one, all the uh, those who are aspiring to take a degree in education, I have to propose that they will run. You know, it's a four-year program that we are running. I said two things. So I'm going to give you uh, uh, two models based on the expectation. Because the expectation is that the teachers that are producing should be well-skilled in the subject that they are teaching. To make that happen, I said two things. So one thing is, let education as a degree program be scaled up from a four-year plan to a five-year plan. So four years, you are busy in your teaching subject uh, faculty. So if you are in history, you are going to be there in history. Just <coughs> do your history for four years. So you have what the BHC person will take. If you are doing physics as a physics teacher, you are there in the physics department for four years. So you do all the physics. Then in fifth year, you then layer on education. So all this education thing, you know, I'm in education and I and I and I just pity you know, pity my colleagues in the faculty who they want to say history of education, uh, three courses, you know, the history of education, the, 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 uh, just fragmenting this thing and wasting the time, sorry to use the word, not the time of the undergraduates and uh, and uh, compromising the future of Nigeria. So all of those courses, these three philosophers, pack them into one, just one. And they give the students the opportunity to do their pedagogical content knowledge and all of that But what is the attraction here? The attraction is that if you come in into the five-year program, when you graduate, your government should be incentivized by saying, okay, even if you graduated in four years and you are employed in government to be maybe level 08, when you graduate in five years, you are going to be level 09 and you advance it further. And they give a lot of incentives to teachers to get the, the to get candidates attracted. I was studying education systems all over the world. I will find that Finland has a part in best education system. So two months ago, we went to Finland, spent two full weeks in that whole country in Finland, studying, okay, why do you have bright people? into your educational system. And why do you have quality teachers? And they said it's very simple. It's back in the, 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 why are people going to medicine, to engineering? It's because there's a lot of money, you know, uh, uh, when you leave the place. So if you make money available, if you make the teacher well remunerated, then you can now call the shots. You can now say, you don't have this. So the teacher in Finland is but even better than the richer, than the medical doctor, than all those professionals that are that you are to understand. So teacher, the teacher is right up there. And before you come into teaching, before you before you are enrolled into a teaching program, you've got to have the highest score in the equivalent of the, the, the UTME. But the moment you still regard teachers as the dread of the place, only dreads will come into the into the into the society to play. So the other thing uh, that is done uh, in, in Finland and is done in, in several other places is that when you come in, you are aware of the return and all of that, but don't think that because you have received your certificate from UNN or from Ibadan or from anywhere else, then that's it for life. You are checked every time you are receiving. Okay, you, listen, uh, you must continue to upgrade yourself. Uh, with, uh, and if you don't, if you, don't, you fail the competency test, then you are, you, are, you are out of the place. You know, and there was a show where they did a test, and they made all kinds of noise, and they said, no, no, okay, fine, you go on as usual. So, you can So, the second bit is if you want to maintain it as a four-year program, then a lot of things must have to happen. The, for now, we have about a third of the cost load of an education grant, taking up education. For me, all the education courses should just be collapsed on every or four. Let the uh, secretary go and take as many courses as possible in the teaching subject area. And just get just a handful of courses, that's it, one will give it as four years. But for me, 
a better preparation model will be for the student. Go, it's just like a combination of B, B, S, C, and B, G, T. So go and do it faithfully at the layer of education. Uh, uh, you are, then we have more time for teaching practice, and then we should avoid any specialization. When I see somebody says he or she has a degree in education management, first degree in education management, I say, you, if you don't know, what are you going to manage? You can't even manage yourself. Or somebody, a first degree in guidance and counseling. What kind of thing? So, which one is wrong? Which is that? Guidance and first degree. You that should be counseled, you should be drinking for people, drinking milk. That should be, you know, you want to be kind of counseled. So I think such any specialization, kind of counseling is great, but let it be a post specialization. A special mind, let it be post specialization. So there are some of these things that we just need to play out of the way so that we have a better educational system. Uh, so by words of completely remarks, now what we see as improvement, uh, we have mentioned a, a, a couple of things. I've also talked about technical and professional education. Uh, I've uh, made some statements on how girls' education uh, can be enhanced and how uh, we can improve the quality assurance operations of the of the education system. You see, you, you need to install a mechanism for quality assuring the system. Constantly check. We have the spectrum service at the state level, at the federal level. They are not as uh, they are not as good as they should be for a host of reasons. One is hunger. Hunger means that the inspector uh, who is hungry goes to a school principal say, they don't see anything, do you think they, they, they just, they will just put something, they will just sign, and they give the envelope, and the man just, you know, goes to the It's better at the tertiary level, where you have FBT for the Polytechnics, SEC for the College of Education, and AEC for the US. What, what I think is that all of this should be collapsed into one. AEC, FBT, SEC should form a body known as tertiary education commission or tertiary education council. That's what happens in most countries of the world. You just have one, not this fragmentary thing. But you say, yes, SEC has its own law, MEC has its own law. So it takes political will now to put all of them together. That is going to streamline operations. It's going to make it more fluent and it's going to be cost saving. So, you then have a department within the Tertiary Education Council or Commission or agency to oversee universities. A department to oversee Western Education, a department to oversee uh, the Polytechnics. So, that, that's something I, I wish to propose uh, for this guy. I've also made some statements on adult and non formal education and what uh, we should do to keep expanding. Uh, last thing I'd like to uh, comment upon, uh, this paper I have uh, given to the... Are you going to make available to us? Okay, that's what I'm sure you're going to get copies of this paper. Uh, it's about the value system in the Nigerian society that has been severely compromised. And the HPR system is being looked onto as a tool for values reorientation. Uh, consequently, all schools will be part of the crusade to inculcate the right values in Nigerian youth and adults. Uh, values such as honesty. You know, this value uh, called honesty, uh, we're told that uh, attitudes are, are caught, not taught. In other words, we want our youth, these kids are the one crying over them, to inculcate these values. We as adults, we should show them exact plaques of these values. The story is told, I'm sure you know of it, of, 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 of father said, my son, you've got to be honest all the time. Yes, sir. And then the child, the father went to the weather to sleep. And then they said, no, come, come, come. Uh, a friend came to say, so the boy ran to the father and said, Baba, 
uh, somebody asking for you. Tell him I'm not in. I say the child should be honest. So we are telling our young ones to be honest. We are telling them to have good values. We are telling them not to be corrupt. And we are showing them every day that I mean, we are we, we are carrying out all this uh, all, all this bad uh, attitudes. Which, so what we are saying here is that we as adults we should also uh, practice what we take respect for elders, hard work, uh, ethnic and religious tolerance should be completed through appropriate curricular and co curricular university. Uh, chairman, uh, distinguished auctions, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity that you have given me to share my thoughts with you on this uh, topic of reforming Nigerian education. Um, looking at what we had in the past, looking at what we have now. And so, what I've done is to underline a few key areas. I've underlined curriculum, I've underlined teachers, I've also looked at uh, uh, facilities. Values. Uh, the key will address is only to sensitize uh, because we are not going to work in groups and facilitators uh, will be sharing with us their own experiences. But the important thing for me, as we round up this colloquium at some point, is that I communicate to contain recommendations that are unique, that are creative, that are innovative that will show that we are thinking outside the box. Two years ago, I asked uh, the associations by subject plenty. We got about, uh, we got about 68 or such reports. And I asked them to just tease out the recommendations. What did we find? Over, no, about 85% of the recommendations were repeated. We have to be out. And then, I ran to a friend at the Calabar Airport and he said, Oh, sir, I want you to come attend uh, a summit on education. And the summit said, uh, You'll be delighted if I, if I, if I come and you know, make, make some intervention. I said, Sorry, I may not be able to come. He said, yeah, He said, I'm busy. I said, No, 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 I'm not very busy, but I don't believe in it because all we want is for government. All the ones we don't do before, let them remain the same. So, I then said to him that, to let you know that I can predict what you are going to the outcome of a summit. I said, give me your email address I did, and I sent him uh, two or three pages of information. When he saw me in month after, ah, he said, Prof, you are a wizard. I said, you don't need wizard. You don't need wizard. You don't need wizard. It's the same thing. Uh, people will talk about uh, that you funding, fund education, this thing, all this stuff. So for us in this colloquium, we just think outside the box. Let's look for some things. No, let's just say some of the, let's just say some of those things that, that I've said before. Because if they have not had it before, the more we talk about it, we get one day. But let us come up with some recommendations that are creative, that are innovative, and that will show that we are thinking outside the box. Thank you for this opportunity.